of um, giving you just a quick overview of what is an entrepreneur. Um, as we know, it is a person that have a drive. You, so when you have a venture, it's almost like you're, you you got to be self motivated because there's nobody else. Especially when you are, when you look at a partnership, that means you're driving off of the strengths of the person that you have decided to go into partnership with. And hopefully the people that you choose to be in partnership with do have some really good strength so that you can balance one another. So now you do have the internet in front of you. And one of the things that I like is that even if you do not know, you have resources in front of you. And that's one of the things that we have to get our young folks to understand. They pick up this phone for so many reasons except for to use it for research. So even if you don't know and you don't remember, guess what? You get an opportunity to pick up your device, which in this case, you have an internet in front of you. And if you don't have one that's logged on, please shift over here so you can log on. And when you able to network with this company, now you can start your own business venture based off of your experience and your ability to network and make connections, okay? You know, get your education. Number one, people see that you start and finish. That means you're a good investor, okay? They are willing to invest in you um, as the investors when they see that you start something and finish. So being an entrepreneur, the path to entrepreneurship, buying an existing business, they're beginning their own business and they're buying a franchise. So one of the franchise that it just is on the top of the line. You guys know one of the fast food uh, um, uh, franchise that definitely declare Sunday is a non-work day? Chick-fil-A. Chick-fil-A, exactly. People really want to take what they enjoy doing and um, either it's from an innovative point or a startup point and they actually want to start their own business. I don't care what you do, you have to be creative and keep in mind, um, flexible hours, create your own business image. But if you put in your mind, even though the con says there's a possibility of failure, but if you put in your mind that you know what, I will succeed no matter what. I'm gonna try to avoid the stress, okay? If you can avoid stress, and a lot of that stress is created by last minute, always rushing, you know, and you can alleviate that if you uh, really practice time management. I, I, I don't agree to nothing until I look at my time management, okay? And that's my calendar. Once I put it on the hard copy, then I add it to the digital, all right? Because I'm gonna always reference this because I want to alleviate as much stress in my life as possible. When you start your business venture, at least have six to 12 months of money in reserve take care of your household needs, especially if you're not living with your parents, and then have uh, money that you can set aside to help with your business venture. One of the things that I believe in is uh, attitude, a positive attitude dictates academic success. If you have a positive attitude no matter what, you will be successful. I, I truly believe in that. When you walk across that threshold, whatever happened on the other side of that door, leave it there. Come in with an attitude that I will be successful that day. Because there are times in your business that you're gonna have some bad days, but guess what? Your customers don't wanna know about it, all right? Now you can build relationship with them, and eventually they will you know, entertain it for a second, just for a second. But the reality is when you come across that threshold, whether it's in that classroom or in your business, you gotta come in there with a mindset of being successful. And I'm telling you, it will rub off on your customers, it will rub off on your classmates, and I'm telling you, your teachers, your educators, your facilitators, your professors, your instructors, all of them will love it, period. They will love it. And then when you need that recommendation, because everybody's gonna need it, I don't care who you are, if I decide to leave my job there tomorrow, I need a recommendation. Guess what I can do? I can dig back into any of those teachers from high school that are still alive, okay? And I stay connected. Networking is key. Networking is key. I can go back to my college years 
and reach out to one of my college mentors and I can still get a recommendation letter, okay? Networking is key. When you start a, 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 a venture or even a, whatever it may be, guys, you gotta have a love for it. Now, in my learning environment, um, I give kids five minutes before the bell. You pull out your phone and look at yourself. Look how beautiful you are. And remind yourself, self-love is the best love in the world. When you love yourself, you want the best for yourself. What your girls think of what? I think it was very helpful. It was interesting. I learned a lot of new things today. And a lot. And I figured out that I can make a business. I thought the class was great today. I wanted to be a marketer, and she taught us how to be an entrepreneur. And we did a lot of research on it today, and I really enjoyed it. I think it was good, and I think um, it taught me a little bit more. What do you want to do in the future? I want to be a cosmetologist, and I want to do hair and sell um, weave um, and products for my business. Um, I want to be a labor and delivery nurse, a pharmacist. What I want to do in the future? I'm not too sure yet. Probably edit stuff. Wanted to be more about a marketer. I wanted to sell edits, resell some things, and then try to grow a good business. Maybe finance or marketing or just have my own business. You think this kind of workshop and working through these questions is going to help you achieve that? Yeah, a little bit. Some yeah. Way. Yeah. I think that the workshop was important to me because it made me learn a lot of new things. So today's um, educational focus of the workshop was to focus on entrepreneurs because it was my understanding there were some young folks that were interested in owning or starting their own business venture. So looking at perhaps what's all involved, the pros and cons of becoming a future entrepreneur, whether or not you're interested in purchasing an existing business, whether you're interested in owning um, your own business where you've actually created um, that business venture product or service, or whether or not you're looking into uh, adventuring into a franchise. So that was the first hour. The second half of the workshop focused on having kids really to look at um, their lifestyles, the lifestyle they want to have in the future. And generally um, taking a backward approach to that is now, let's look up what career that I must pursue in order to be to live that particular lifestyle. It's exciting, especially when you can get young folks as early as their freshman year in high school and definitely middle school because the middle school, according to the state of Missouri, the kids are really working on the exploratory piece where they're really exploring and venturing what they want to do. It's really nice to hear when kids have an ideal now. Now we want to make sure that they're actually following their career paths when they get to high school. And a lot of times our job is to educate not just the students but the parents on why it's important to take these various classes now while you're in middle school and high school so when you get off to college it won't be a shock to you. Do you run these workshops often? Is it always kids or do you do all ages? Actually, I run the workshop with, I'm working in collaboration with um, Mrs. Bell um, through her program, a nonprofit group, and I generally do the workshops here. I do other workshops at school where I work in collaboration with AT&T, who are, are my partners in education with Worldwide DECA or International DECA. Uh, and that is a career and technical student organization. So I'm pretty excited. Um, I enjoy educating young folks, preparing them for high school, but most importantly, preparing them for college and careers so that they can truly understand um, about the importance of that lifestyle and making a difference in their communities. Is it always interesting to hear what the kids want to do? Absolutely, absolutely. But also making sure when you're hearing what they want to do, you got to have that reality check, you know. Um, I, I don't believe in giving false hope. I believe in being very honest and candid with kids so that they'll know that you have to understand that you do need a, a pretty sturdy foundation in order for you to pursue your career interests. Yes. Is this kind of what you wanted to do growing up? Thinking, I want to train people. You know, actually, I think I ran away from that years ago. Um, I actually wanted to major in medical research. It's interesting that I'm in education, so I still get to do research, 
and I love leadership and I love managing folks, but then you kind of take a seat back because I also love being creative. And in the world of marketing, you get to be as creative as you want. Um, you get to teach kids how to be creative and most importantly, think outside of the box. I love it. I guess my last question is, uh, you know, as far as workshops and this particular workshop, uh, what's the focus going to be the next time? And do you hope to maybe see these kids in the future doing what they told you they would do here? So next time, the expectation is that the kids, they have homework, so they'll be able to research a little bit more about what's involved in becoming an entrepreneur. Um, the other focus of the workshop will be on their presentation where they've done some background research to get a better understanding of education, um, the salary, the different careers within their career cluster, because so often they limit themselves to just one thing, like the young lady, um, she's interested in being a cosmetologist, but when she looked at the data, it said tr educational training. Well, as a cosmetologist, you can train people on how to use the different products that they're gonna actually use on the customer. And that's another form of education and training. So it's just opening their eyes up to look at other um, different careers within that cluster. Do you see these kids in the future? Do they tell you they are doing what they told you? Actually, this is the first group. Some of these kids are second group um, that I've worked with, but I have worked with kids um, in, the, in, in the past that I actually get phone calls and get follow up on, that they've actually acquired their degrees, that they actually are now pursuing in some of the careers that they initially um, started off in. And I'm so excited about that. It's always nice to hear that, you know, so absolutely.